evidence demonstrating the deliberate use of power series techniques in music, either before or after Schillinger, is hard to find. One doubts whether a composer like Schumann thought much about symmetries in his piano cycle carnival. There has been some research into Gershwin's use of Schillinger techniques, but so far nothing about squares has been unearthed. There is some evidence that John Cage was influenced by this method. After an intense session with Schillinger, he produced a series of pieces starting in 1939 in which he said he'd used a square root method. But when one looks at the scores, you frequently find the maths has been modified. The square bar group has an extra bar or one too few. But this is exactly what one would expect from a composer. That is, a model structure is decorated or varied according to need. For analysts, this is most frustrating. For composers, it's normal. Schillinger suggested that his theory of rhythm would explain music as a global phenomenon. And my own research into North Indian tabla music shows that power series are well established in both the composition and performance practice. For example, in the coordination of spectacular displays of rhythmic virtuosity. The synchronization of two or more performers after an extended period in which their parts have apparently developed in a high degree of rhythmic independence is one of the exquisite features of Indian music. One well-known procedure uses the interference of two rhythms Tintal, a metric cycle of 16 beats, itself a square, played by an accompanist, and the distinctive Utan, a composition of 27 beats, performed by the Now you've probably already noticed that 27 is a cube, a cube of three. And when I tell you that this rhythm is repeated three times, making 81 beats, which is a square of nine, you'll begin to see that perhaps there's no coincidence here. Remember the 16 beat tintal cycle? That's repeated five times by the other instrumentalist. That makes 80 beats five times 16. So the two cycles have a difference of 181th, making the moment of return an extraordinary event. Now imagine stringing multiples 81 beat cycles together, seemingly improvising over the top, and you'll understand why the audience cheers when the two players come back together again, apparently without any pre-planning. <laughs> 